Well, greetings, YouTube. I recently came across a post on Instagram by another YouTuber known as Vacuum Wars. Now, this guy makes really high-quality content, and I'll include a link to his uh, channel, but he's definitely a newbie. Uh, not to video editing, not to production values, they're much higher than mine, actually, but to just the general uh, experience with knowledge in knowledge pool and of many vacuums that he's used, it seems. Uh, and this is, goes to anybody. Unless you work in a vacuum shop, you're probably not going to have this experience. Or you have a vacuum collection that exceeds a thousand vacuums or something crazy like that. Um, so what I've gathered are a bunch of bare floor tools. And um, I'm going to use my central vacuum for this demo and we're going to see what works best for picking up what kind of things uh, so I want to go through a couple different ones. Um, I'm going to start off with my uh, a couple of my favorites and just kind of go through the line and show you what's what. So the first is a Visselbeck tool. Um, and you can see there are some large wheels there. We have two squeegees and we have uh, some limp pickers and then we have wheels on the side. And you can see that it will actually let air through on the side. Um, this is a very good tool. I really like this for bare floor pickup. In fact, I use this in my shop. Uh, but you, you can really, you could use this for anything. This used to be equipped with old Royal backpacks. So that's, uh, that's tool number one. And then the uh, Visselbeck offering number two is uh, Mila's also calls a parquet twister. Um, this is also sold uh, with Simplicity Recars. Uh, this is a very common tool as well. And you can see what's nice about this is big channels to allow big stuff to pass. Uh, it maneuvers very, very well on that double ball joint. So that's, uh, what's that? The next thing I've got is a traditional bare floor tool, and this came with my central vac kit, and I've used it once or twice. And you can see that it's got a cutout in front, and then it goes down. Um, we're going to grab a box. This is work, but it, it's really hard to see, but you can see kind of how that works, give you an idea how that. The problem with this one versus the other double jointed is this you can lift up or down and then it doesn't make contact with the floor and work. Um, the next one I'm gonna demo with is just a power head. We're gonna use an EBK 360. It's common, it works on bare floor. I don't even need to show you the bottom of that. Mm. And the next two are switchables. Um, again, double jointed as well. So that when I say double jointed, I mean there's a joint here and a separate joint here, which allows, maybe even triple jointed you could call this, uh, allows it to make contact with the floor. So this switches between uh, an area rug and bare floor. And I've chosen to shoot this here because I have an area rug and bare floor. So I'll get to show you which ones work on both, because uh, inevitably you can end up switching back and forth. So that's, that's a Dyson DC-07 or DC-14. They also made it with the 15 and probably a few others that I'm not mentioning, but... Now the next thing I have here, and you're wondering how I'm going to demo this, is I have an old Mila hose that I have a central back end on. Um, so we have the Mila switchable floor tool, and this is probably one of my favorites. Again, maintains contact with the floor, it's double jointed. But what's unique about this is it has the mono wheel. And this was originally designed by Visselbeck, and Mila's been selling this for over 30 years. We have limp pickers, and you can see it will allow stuff on the side. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw some dirt down and we're gonna see how they do. All right, so I've also arranged the floor tools in accordance to how high they are. Forgive me, I don't have a metric ruler handy. Um, so I guess the lowest profile one is the classic bare floor tool to give you an idea and I'm measuring from the top not from here give you an idea and it's just under three inches most of them are about four inches the next would be uh, the squeegee Visselvec tool which actually might be a little bit shorter now that I measure it uh, but that's that's really a, I've sold this as a low profile tool before excellent tool next up is actually the Mila uh, even though it's got the wider fitting Again, just under three inches. Um, really low profile as well. 
And the Dyson tool is pretty low profile, but it gets really high up here where this pedal is. And when you put this pedal and do that, you can see that it really hinders its performance about three and uh, three quarters. So you can see it's a little bit taller there. Um, but again, still low profile enough to get other things. One that's really tall that doesn't look tall is this guy. This guy is right almost at under just four inches. Um, but again, he's really low down here, so it kind of makes up for it. And that's because of this double swivel. And of course, uh, we have this guy at right around five inches even with the low profile pedals on it uh, to give you an idea. Okay, one other thing I want to throw at you is we can talk about how well these things pick up, uh, but maneuverability and weight will ultimately be an issue. So I have a, here a scale, we're going to tear it, and we're going to measure it in ounces, and then I'll see how well uh, it provides gram. So first of all, we are going to go to the Visselvec tool, which I believe will be the lightest, at uh, 10 ounces and a quarter and 287 grams for those of you in Europe. Next is the Visselvec multi-swivel uh, floor tool, which is 274 grams as well, <laughs> uh, but, nine, uh, but nine, nine, almost 10 ounces. We're still at zero, I'm still tear it, all right. The traditional floor tool, which also was about nine, uh, almost 10 ounces, so same same sort of weight as the other one. So those, those three tools right there actually all weigh about the same. So that, that's pretty important. So let's measure the Mila tool, which has a steel bottom, so it might weigh a little bit more. So it weighs a whole pound, five ounces, which is about 608 grams for uh, you folks uh, in Europe. And we're going to measure the Dyson. Uh, tool, which actually feels a little heavier. Let's see if it is. It is uh, 623 ounces. That's one and a half pounds. So again, those those switchable floor tools actually, even though this one has a metal bottom, weighs as much as the Dyson. Now the one that is going to weigh the most, and we all know it's going to weigh the most, but because I thought it was maybe the clear performer of all of them. All right, that weighs six and a half pounds and uh, 2.739 kilograms to give you an idea. So, and the reason that all that is relevant is because when you are using these tools, maneuverability uh, and weight kind of play a key and whether you can maneuver them or not, whether they fit under things is big. All right. So for the purpose of our experiment, I have taped off an area and we will be using a couple different things at one teaspoon um, each. The only thing I'm not really able to measure out is the pet hair, so I've just kind of scattered around. We'll try and keep that as consistent as possible. Um, but we have flour, breakfast cereal, we have uh, cat litter, and then we have the pet hair. And this is a 24 by 14 size square, and the reason I've chosen this size is it is a little bit wider than all of our nozzles, and then I figure two square feet is a good demo range where we can keep things pretty consistent. So uh, without further ado, let's give the Whistlebeck floor tool the twister the first uh, go. idea what that did with some really fine stuff. One more And what we can see here is that it pushed a couple of little items out of the way. Again, this is an extreme test, uh, but that gives you an idea, and you can see what hair was built up, got caught there, but that, that's what the Visselbeck does. Now, not all of these are meant to work on an area rug, but we're going to give it a try anyways. You can see 
have to lift up. See the problem we're having here. So not for really good use for uh, doing uh, area runs. So next up is the squeegee tool. bottom side. So that did excellent. You saw it just picked everything up and that's because it just allows things to flow through. Let's try the squeegee tool. So one thing I don't like about the squeegee tool is it's really hard to push on most types of area rugs. Now if you didn't have a central vac, this might be easier. All right, next up is the traditional style bare floor tool. Again, I'm gonna have to hold this angle just right for this to work. good. Now this is not designed for doing an area rug, but we're going to try anyways. So that was really hard to push. That was miserable to do. But I know a lot of old ladies who like to use this tool on their area rugs. Alright, next up is the vintage Dyson tool, which I actually use on a regular basis and really like. So we're going to make sure it's flipped the right way, and we're going to get going. But I had to lift up the tool because the holes here aren't big enough to allow big things to go through. Let's see how it does on area rugs. Let's see how that Dyson tool does on a, an area rug here. Now, this tool has to be switched back and forth like that. So now it's in its area rug mode. Not just really well. actually ripped up our tape here so you can see this is one of the better performers for an area rug. Alright now let's try the EBK 360 we're gonna set it to the lowest height setting which is number one and have the brush roller off. See So you can see this picks up very, very well. You can see a little bit of hair did get stuck to the roller, so as soon as you turn the roller on to go back to carpet, that will clear itself out. One thing I did notice, a little bit of flour left behind on that one. 
Now let's try it on an area rug, which is of course, area rugs and carpets are what this was designed for. So let's see how it does. So you can see the EBK360 cleaned everything up perfectly. Again, this is what it's designed for doing, so there's no surprise there. And you can see all the stuff is not really stuck on the bottom except for some of my wife's hair. All right, the last floor tool we're gonna test is going to be the traditional Mila switchable floor tool. Show you the bottom side of this. So you can see here it does get stuck to this, but you can vacuum it off quite easily. Um, but you can see that it did excellent in its fine pickup. Um, it even picked up a lot of the coarse stuff. The cat litter, there's a lot of cat litter that we're testing with, and maybe next time I do testing, I might not test with as much. Uh, but it actually did pick it up quite well. All right, on to our area rug. We're just gonna switch this. Again, it's gonna bring the brushes up and you can see that I've cleaned the bottom off. So let's give that a try. Show you the bottom. Now, you can see that the lint pickers really didn't get anything stuck on them, even though there was a bit of hair here. Um, this thing that's showing up, uh, that's actually in my camera only, sorry. Um, you can see nothing really stuck there, mono wheel. This one pushed all right. I think the Dyson and the uh, Visselvec uh, carpet tool were the easiest to push, but this one pushed all right. Um, it's weird using this tool with that much more power. Um, I definitely think this is much easier to push when you just have the Mila. I think a central back is a bit much for this tool. But you can see it, it did perform very well. So in conclusion, um, there's one other tool here I would like to test or like to show you, which is, of course, the, uh, the SIBO Bear floor tool is an excellent tool. I'd like to show you that. Um, but in conclusion, uh, those are the most common types of bare floor tools that I've come across in the vacuum industry. There are also ones that I all happen to personally own. Um, so if you feel there's one that deserves its own video, please comment below. Um, definitely add questions. Tell me which one you thought did the best or which one you like. Um, and definitely thumbs up this video.